the topic for today's lecture is vernal and endotropic conjunctivitis we'll be discussing them uh, one by one uh, starting with pathogenesis of uh, vkc it is a recurrent bilateral disorder in which both ige and cell mediated immune uh, mechanism play important roles it primarily affects boys and onset is generally from about the age of 5 years onwards there is remission by the late teens in 95% of cases although many of the remainder develop atopic keratoconjunctivitis vkc is rare in temperate regions but relatively common in warm dry climates such as mediterranean sub saharan africa and middle east in temperate regions over 95% of patients have other atopic conditions such as asthma and eczema and two thirds have a family history of atopy VKC often occurs on a seasonal basis with a peak incidence over late spring and summer although there may be mild perennial symptoms uh it is classified uh, as palpebral limbal and mixed VKC palpebral VKC primarily involves the upper tarsal conjunctiva it may be associated with significant corneal disease as a result of close opposition between the inflamed conjunctiva and the corneal epithelium limbal disease typically affects black and asian people while mixed vkc has features of both palpebral and limbal disease the diagnosis is clinical and investigations are usually not required eosinophils may be abundant in conjunctival scrapings the symptoms con consist of intense itching uh, which may be associated with lacrimation photophobia a foreign body sensation burning and thick mucoid discharge increased blinking is also very common in palpebral disease early to mild disease is characterized by conjunctival hyperemia and a diffuse velvety papillary hypertrophy on uh, superior tarsal plate uh, macropapillary uh, which are less than 1 mm have a flat topped polygonal appearance reminiscent of cobblestones uh, focal or diffuse as they are seen uh, in the picture uh, these are focal papillary and diffuse here on the upper tarsal conjunctiva uh, whitish inflammatory infiltrates may be seen in intense disease progression to giant papillary which are more than 1 mm can occur as adjacent smaller lesions amalgamate when dividing septa rupture as it is seen here and it also uh, looks like cobblestone appearance you can see big giant papillary here uh, after that mucus deposition uh, can occur between the uh, giant papillary as it is seen in the uh, in this picture you can see clear mucus deposition here and here as it is one of the hallmark of uh, vkc decreased disease activity is characterized by mild and milder conjunctival injection and decreased mucus production now limbal disease uh, gelatinous limbal uh, conjunctival papillary that may be associated with transient apically located white cellular collection which are corner trantus dot uh, as you can see they start earlier there is one dot here then they uh, expand across the limbus but are smaller and in third picture the exaggerated picture is demonstrated now in tropical region, uh, regions limbal disease may be severe as it is seen here the whole limbal area there giant papillary eyelid disease is usually mild in contrast to the keratoconjunctivitis now keratopathy is more frequent in palpebral disease and may take the following forms Uh, first of all superior punctate epithelial erosions are associated with layers of mucus and superior cornea as shown in the picture uh, superior punctate epithelial uh, erosions they are stained with rose bengal here in this area 
Epithelial macroerosions caused by a combination of epithelial toxicity from inflammatory mediators and direct mechanical effect from papillae. Plaques and shield ulcers may develop in the palpebral or the mixed disease and the exposed Bowman's membrane becomes coated with mucus and calcium phosphate, leading to inadequate wetting and delayed re-epithelialization. This development is serious and warrants urgent attention to prevent secondary bacterial infection as it is seen here. We can observe this shield ulcer here in this picture. This, this is an emergency and can should be treated as soon as possible. Subepithelial scars that are typically grey and oval may affect vision. Pseudogeron toxin can develop in recurrent limbal disease. It is characterized by paralimbal band of superficial scarring resembling arthrocellulis and uh, adjacent to uh, a previously inflamed segment of a limbus, as it is pointed out by the arrow here. This area. Vascularization does not tend to be prominent, so some peripheral superficial vessels and growth is uh, common, especially superior, uh, superiorly. Keratoconus and other forms of corneal ectasias are more common in DKC and are thought to be at least partly due to persistent eye rubbing. And uh, keratoconus and other ectasias are also uh, very common in every uh, eye rubbing disease. Herbie simplex keratitis is more common than average, though less than in atopic keratoconjunctivitis. It can be aggressive and is occasionally bilateral. Coming towards atopic keratoconjunctivitis, uh, we'll discuss pathogenesis and diagnosis. Atopic keratoconjunctivitis is a rare bilateral disease. It typically develops in adulthood uh, with the peak incidence uh, in 30s to 50 years following a long history of atopic dermatitis, that is eczema. Asthma is also extremely common in these patients. About 5% have suffered from childhood VKC. There is little or no gender preponderance. AKC tends to be chronic and unremitting with a relatively low expectation of eventual resolution and is associated with significant visual morbidity. Whereas VKC is more frequently seasonal and generally worse in the spring, AKC tends to be perennial and is often worse in the winters. Patients are sensitive to a wide range of airborne environmental allergens. The distinction between AKC and VKC can be made clinically Eosinophil tends to be less common in conventional scraping than VKC. Symptoms are similar to those of VKC but are frequently more severe and unremitting. Starting with the eyelids, uh, the skin changes are more prominent as it is seen in the picture uh, and are typically eczematoid, erythema, dryness, scaling and thickening, sometimes with disruption to epidermal integrity such as fissuring and scratching and excoriation the later due to intense itching associated chronic stiflococcal blepharitis and metaurosis are also common they may be keratinization of lead margin hachogi sign is the absence of the lateral portion of the eyebrows denny morgan poles are the lid skin poles caused by persistent rubbing. Tightening of the facial skin may cause lower lid ectropion and epiphora. Tosis is also not uncommon. We need to remember the sign like her togi sign, Denny Morgan poles, etc. Conjunctival involvement is preferentially inferior preferable. Uh, whereas VKC uh, uh, has worse uh, involvement of the superior conjunctiva, 
discharge is generally more watery than stringy uh, mucoid discharge as in VKC. Hyperemia chemosis is not uncommon during the active inflammation. Papillae are initially smaller in VKC, although larger lesion may develop later. Diffuse conjunctival infiltration and scarring may give a, a whitish featureless appearance. As it is seen in the picture uh, uh, at the top, there, the features are hardly noticeable. Psychotracial changes can lead to moderate slim symblepron uh, form formation as it is seen in the next picture. You can see these connectival adhesions formation here. These are simple neurons. And for initial shortening as a result, uh, and keratinization of the curenco. As it can be seen here. Now, limbal involvement similar to that of the limbal VKC can be seen including corner transverse dots. Uh, when it comes to keratopathy, punctate epithelial erosions uh, over the inferior third of the cornea are common and can be marked as opposed to in uh, a VKC where the superior portion is involved. Uh, peripheral vascularization and stromal scarring are more common than in VKC. Um, as it is seen here, peripheral vascularization and <coughs> persistent epithelial defects. Uh, sometimes with associated focal thinning can occasionally progress to perforation with dysmetrosis. Uh, as you can see, there is uh, Probably an epithelial defect here, but we cannot say anything uh, with conviction without any uh, staining. Uh, persistent epithelial defects sometimes uh, may lead to plaque formation. as it is seen here and here. Predisposition to secondary bacterial and fung fungal infection and to aggressive herpes simplex keratitis is also present. Keratoconus is common about 15% and with the VKC may be secondary to chronic ocular rubbing. Uh, Presenile shield like anterior and posterior subcapsular cataract are common and may be exacerbated by long term steroid therapy. Uh, because of the high lid margin, uh, carriage of step aureus, uh, cataract surgery is, uh, has an increased risk of endophthalmitis. Retinal detachment is more common than in general population and this particular risk following cataract surgery. So there we are winding up the lecture of, uh, on the uh, features of AKC and VKC. Uh, if you like the lecture, please click on the like button and uh, subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much.